Good evening. You are with the news here. I'm Seher Zama. We're making a start with uh, an interesting statement here, an observation that has been made while taking note of uh, gender insensitivity or the imbalance stereotyping of women that is prevalent in courts. And this is coming in from a very senior legal voice, Mr. K.K. Venugopal, also the Attorney General of India here, uh, having told the Supreme Court in a written submission that uh, improving the representation of women in courts is the need of the hour. Uh, he's further highlighted that India has uh, never had a woman Chief Justice of India. He's also further said that it should be at least 50% of women representation in all leadership positions. He's further added here that uh, improving this representation of women in the judiciary will help in a more balanced and even in a more empathetic approach in cases involving sexual assault. We're going to be getting in more details here, but in also stating the facts of the case or what the circumstances here is of representation of women across courts. My colleague Gauri getting us those details. To go through some of the stats to understand the situation. First of all, one big fact that uh, everybody should know that till date, India never had a woman chief justice, which is startling but true. Another big fact, which is uh, right now, uh, we are witnessing that only 80 women high court judges uh, can be uh, are actually present in India. Also, another important fact is that no women in six Indian high courts. Very shocking, but this is true. In fact, six high courts have only one woman judge. Uh, so another important fact and also Madras High Court has nine women judges, fairly better than other high courts. And of course, Punjab and Haryana High Court also has 11 women judges. Also a better stats uh, than uh, if we compare it to the national figures. So this is how uh, the situation is when it comes to women representation in Indian judiciary. Let's get in more voices here on this, legal voices on their view on this statement here that has come in. We have a senior advocate of the Supreme Court, Mr. Sanjay Hegre, with us over the phone line. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for being with us. Uh, how are you taking in this remark? Even though, of course, given the fact that uh, uh, it, it is for the collegium to decide uh, over and above gender on who really qualifies to be the judge to be appointed uh, across uh, courts here in India. Uh, but he also stated this uh, as uh, in a note of anguish uh, while his uh, his assistance was sought in a plea uh, which was wanting to challenge a Madhya Pradesh High Court case uh, in which uh, a sexual assault uh, a uh, person who was, who was guilty of sexual assault here, uh, who was asked to tie a rakhi to his victim on conditions of bail. All right, we're going to be reconnecting with Mr. Hegre on that in just a bit. Uh, but it's uh, also important here to note on, on exactly why this written submission here came in. Uh, he had submitted this to the Supreme Court. Uh, let's get in more voices. We have Ms. Pramila Nasargi with us over the phone line as well, uh, senior advocate with us. Appreciate you being with us, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, in, in your opinion, uh, how should this be taken, uh, even though it is established that the collegium eventually decides here? Uh, but, but it's been expressed as a view also, as point of an anguish, that we do need uh, more women representation in the courts. Yeah. I have been fighting for the same cause for the, for the past 20 years and more. In every organization and in every conference, we have been repeating the same thing. See, why is Article 15 is there in the Constitution? They, can, they say when there is no proper representation, adequate representation, Article 15 can be used by the Parliament, uh, I mean the government, to accommodate ladies. 70 years and more, uh, uh, they had the uh, freedom, they have the uh, uh, independence, but not a single lady has been appointed as a chief justice of India. Why is this? Why is this sort of way? Do, do they not know that there is no adequate representation? And if it has to be done, either they can invoke Article 15 and see that the lady is made the chief justice of India. Otherwise, in our own right, we are not beggars. 
we lady educators, we don't say just because they are ladies, you give us. We never ask for it. We are, if we are competent, if we are eligible, we we have to be accommodated. There are umpteen ladies practicing in India who are competent and eligible. They can choose any one of them, and even on their own right, they can come up and become chief judges. See, if only uh, the lady uh, who was in. Uh, Bombay High Court, when, if she had been appointed at the appropriate time when she deserved it, she would have become and uh, uh, retired as a chief judge of India. They deliberately mm. postponed that appointment. Now time has come. We want to say that there are two lady judges who are eligible as on today, even at the senior level. One, one, one lady is in Karnataka, Justice Nagaratna. If she is promoted today, she can become the chief judge of India in her own right. Okay. Because she's competent. Why they don't do that? They just want to post vote and they will make that right. junior. Absolutely. That's why I'm so, Ms. 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 Sargi, the question here is that it shouldn't be as... Uh, that, that no one's questioning that this has been biased or it has been a case of gender preferences here. But in your view, there have been enough qualified women for whatever curious reason haven't made it to the absolute top here in within the collegium? I, I, I will definitely tell you deliberately they were not done. I am telling you. Sujata Manohar, if she had been promoted okay. at the appropriate time, she would have become. They prevented. They made some junior to uh, her becoming a senior judge. They were promoted early and she was prevented. Why is this attitude? There is general bias in the mind of the collegium also. You can take it in any way, even if there is a contempt, I don't mind. There is the deliberate bias. You see, we had Manjula Kellur. She was the chief justice of Kerala. All right, you, you're, you're of course saying that there is, there is deliberate bias here, yes. uh, which is why we haven't seen yes. that representation. And of course, Mr. Mr. Venugopal himself has made this observation. Please stay with us. We're getting in more voices here. We have Ms. Karuna Nandi, senior advocate as well with us over the phone line. Uh, good morning, Karuna. Thank you for being with us here. Uh, are you are you completely in line with this, uh, this 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 personal opinion that has been expressed by uh, Mr. K K Venugopal, uh, or do you feel that it has largely across the board down the decades uh, been a basis of merit? The collegium decides basis of merit and not gender. Look, there's no question of the merit only throwing up. Upper caste, straight, male, able-bodied judges, right? Um, and predominantly Hindu. It makes no sense. Um, this subgroup is a really, really tiny percentage of the population. Now, the thing is that this is the group that is, of course, uh, educated at a much higher rate. But it is also the most networked group, you know, this 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 group or this population group. So I think when people say that, oh, merit should predominate and not gender, I think it's very important, uh, gender or other identity, it's very important to see there is, you are actually leaving out the merit of um, meritorious people from other groups. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you end up with a group that is, so limited in its identity. Also, I think what happens, and I think that uh, there are a number of judges within this group that actually see that and are looking to expand the um, okay. those who decide such issues of justice, right? Because they understand that and they understand that in a deep way. Look, the thing mm -hmm. is that lived experience is extremely important. But I also think that, look, and, and that is a value in and of itself. Having women in these decision-making positions is a value in and of itself. But we must also remember that women are not a monolith. So if you just populate the 50% or well, why should it stop at 50%, you know? Why should it not be 60%? If you would just populate the judiciary with um, women, the danger is that they will all be upper caste, straight, able-bodied, savarna, Hindu women. Right. And that's not something you want either. So I think it's really okay. important to All right. So you're, of course, looking at a balance on this here as well. Uh, but, but, but Karina, also the, the, the case in point, the context in which this has been raised in, in that, that, that shocking judgment that came in from the Madhya Pradesh High Court in a case of molestation this August, uh, granting uh, uh, 
a, a molestation accused person uh, who, who was pronounced guilty, granting him bail basis on him tying a rakhi to the victim. Uh, do you think increase in representation of women, and that is the argument that was made here as well, uh, would largely then also control these nature of judgments that come in once in a while, which, which are largely insensitive uh, to assault cases against women? I think this is my colleague Aparna Bhatt's case, and uh, I think there were seven or eight women lawyers who brought this to the attention of the court, that it's not just this court, that it's a large number of cases like this, right? So yes, I think that the representation of women yes. would would help significantly, but I also think that it's absolutely vital to make sure that um, it's not, uh, th that representation does not, that the efforts don't end with representation. You've got to make sure that there is some kind of mechanism, uh, whether it's the high court controlling uh, in, in its administrative mechanism against the trial court, whether it's review of judgments, whether it's the end, uh, National Judicial Academy uh, and the Delhi Judicial Academy, where I have been involved in workshops mm -hmm. uh, to train judges. I think at every single level you have to, any review of judges, whether it's internal at the Supreme Court level or whether it's by the High Court of the okay. lower judiciary, must include, if I may just finish, must include a review of constitutional safeguards, right? In the sense that what are, what are the kinds of decisions that are happening by the Mirajkar judgment, it was a seven-judge judgment, no Article 32 lies against the mm -hmm. Supreme Court judgment. So that review has gone, Okay. So when you have a Supreme Court judgment or a High Court judgment, and right. it's more of a problem if it's a Supreme Court judgment, violating fundamental rights, then I think that when you look at the promotion or uh, review of the performance of a particular judge, then I think these factors um, should come into account. All right. We, we appreciate you sharing your view there on that, both Karuna Nandi and Pramila Nasargi. Uh, in agreement with the observation here that is coming from KK Venugopal, that yes, there needs to be an increase in the representation of women in the judiciary system. Many thanks for being with us. We'll have to leave it at that. We're slipping into a tiny breather. Back in just a bit. <laughs>